Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to show you how to use Python on Raspberry Pis to connect multiple Raspberry Pis to a single Raspberry Pi server using Socket.io to send messages like sensor data to aggregate them on a server and then do whatever you want with them. And so this came from a question that somebody reached out and asked me about how they could connect multiple Raspberry Pi zeros to a single Raspberry Pi server that would uh, accept sensor readings and then send them to a PC or you know to the web or whatever. And so I just wanted to do a, a quick video to help that person out and anybody else that's that's looking to do something similar. And so uh, I'm here on the python-socket.io getting started page. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a server and then multiple clients. We're going to simulate the Raspberry Pis. We don't actually have to use physical Raspberry Pis. Uh, you'll see uh, what I mean here in a minute. And so let's start with the server. So I'm just going to come down here to server examples and I'm going to grab the code and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to come over here to my Visual Studio code window, create a new file called, we'll call it myserver.py. And then I'm just going to paste it in and save that. And what we'll see here is a couple of things. First of all, we need to have both eventlet and socket IO um, packages installed. And what you might want to do here is uh, let's make this a little bigger. You might want to do pip install socket IO, but that is actually not the socket IO that you want, the package that you want. You actually want the pip install Python dash socket IO. So make sure that you pip install Python dash socket IO, not just socket IO. Uh, you'll save yourself some trouble there. And so once we've installed uh, Python, socket IO, and eventlet, I have them both installed already, um, we can run our server code. But before we do that, I'm going to make just a couple of changes. And so the first thing you'll see here is we do this socket IO server to create the server. And then we create this SWSGI app, which is really a way to just host the socket IO server. And so we actually don't need this static files for our example. This is if you wanted to actually host like an index.html or other files uh, in the same directory here. We don't need to do that. So I'm just going to remove that and save it. And then we've got some helper uh, decorators here that make this really super simple to interact with. We have this SIO event, which the connect will fire when a device connects. And we'll just print out connect and the session ID of the client that connects to our server here. We have a custom message here, my message, which we'll play with more here in a minute. And then we have a disconnect. So when uh, something disconnects, we'll print out the disconnect as well as the session ID. And uh, then down here, this just says if name is main, which means if you're running this file, myserver.py with Python, then go ahead and start up the server with the event lit listening and so pretty simple 20 lines of code to get our server up and running so if we come down here and we do python server not server sorry my server dot pi you'll see that the wsgi is starting up and it's listening on localhost port 5000 waiting for clients to connect that's all we need to get started on the server side so i'm going to go ahead and uh, cancel that uh, just so you're aware um, we're running Python 2.7.17 and the Python socket IO library works for both Python 2.7 and Python 3, but there is a bug that I just filed on the Python 2.7, which I will show you about here in just a second. So let's exit out and the bug is on the client side. So let's, let's take a look at that. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our um, documentation. You can see here we have a client example. So again, I'm just going to copy this wholesale and we're going to paste it into a new file that we'll call we'll call client1.py. And so this is where you would run this code on the Raspberry Pi that is your client. In this case, um, so I don't have to hook up five Raspberry Pis, I'm just going to run it all locally, but th this code would be running on a Raspberry Pi. So we'll, we'll put a little comment here, running on Raspberry Pi 1. Okay, and again, we're importing socket.io, and this time we're creating a client instead of a server. Again, we have these helper, uh, very simple decorators to do uh, connect and disconnect. And then we have, this is for receiving messages, so we're gonna just get rid of this for right now, because uh, we don't need that. 
And then we have an SIO.connect, which will connect to that local host. So in this case, what you would do is uh, you would put in the IP address of your server. So on the server, we're starting it on localhost 5000. You might want to do that on a different port. You'd have to make sure that that port is open on your Raspberry Pi. And then on the client, you'll just connect to the IP address of the server or the you'd use the host name and the port that you set up in the server. In this case, I'm going to use localhost because again, I'm running all of this locally on my machine. And then this SIO.wait is just a helper. It's a convenience function in Socket.io, uh, the Python Socket.io that just lets it basically churn and wait for connections from the server, or sorry, messages from the server, I should say, not connections. Uh, and then, so we actually don't want that. What we wanna do is we want to um, call, just to simulate a, a sensor. We want this to, to be like a sensor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a, a function up here called um, send sensor readings. And then in this function, you could create whatever, you know, import whatever libraries you have to read whatever sensors you have attached to your Raspberry Pi. And then you're going to send them to the server. And so I'm just going to say while true so that this goes over and over and over. I'm going to do SIO.emit. And I'll call, and this is, this is how you send messages to the server. You use the dot emit call, and I'm gonna call it, uh, what was the message name? We'll just say, uh, we'll say my message actually, because again, over here on my server, it's listening for my message. The decorator grabs the name of the function and uses that as the message. So it's looking for this, function will be fired when it receives a message called my underscore message. So that's what I'm going to emit. And then you emit any data with that. And so I'll say this is, we're going to emit the temperature and we'll say it's whatever, 75 degrees. Okay. So that's what I'm going to emit. And then I'm going to uh, sleep. There's a convenience function called sleep, SIO.sleep for five seconds. And so every five seconds, I am going to send the temperature. And again, this is just dummy data. Obviously, you would get the actual sensor readings that you wanted. This is just for an example. And then in the connect, so once my connection is established, I'm going to call SIO.start background task. And I'm going to pass it send sensor readings. I I think I got the name of that function right. So once this client connects, it's gonna print connection established, and then it's gonna kick off send sensor readings, which is just an infinite loop every five seconds, sending messages to the server. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start my server, and this is where you're gonna see uh, the bug, and I'll show you how to fix it in Python 2.7 until the library. Uh, maintainer fixes it but I'm going to start up my server the server started then I'm going to grab a another terminal window over here I'm in the same folder make that a little let's see and we're going to say python client one dot pi and I'm going to try and run that and right away you're going to get this error message that the module object has no attribute main thread. And what is happening is this file that the Python socket IO library installed does not actually support Python 2, even though the documentation says that it does support Python 2. So depending on when you watch this video, this may or may not be fixed. If it's still not fixed, let me show you how to fix it. I'm going to grab the path of this file. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to just do code. That code is just VS code. So it's going to open it up in VS code for me. And I'm going to come down to line 88. And it's right here. It's this threading.main underscore thread. Main underscore thread does not exist in Python 2.7. This is a Python 3 only call. And the library apparently doesn't take that into account correctly. And so what I'm going to do is just get rid of this entire and. and just say if the original signal handler is none, then make it then assign it something. This is going to create some funky behavior, which you will see here in just a second, but it does prevent it from crashing on you. And so you think that you have it all fixed. And so we'll come down here and we'll try and run it again. Client one. And now we're going to get another message that looks to be the exact same. 
until you look more carefully at it. This time it's in the uh, engine IO client.py. And so again, we're just gonna take this, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna say code that file. And it's the exact same problem. It's down here. It's trying to do the same thing, threading.main. So we're just gonna get rid of the duplicate. So now it just says is none, then do this original signal handler. And this signal handler is so that you can control C out of it, which is now broken, but the program will run now so that I can illustrate how this is supposed to work. So let's clear this and then let's third time's a charm, say Python client one. Okay, connection established. And then over here, you're gonna see that it's sending temp. And every five seconds, it's gonna be sending temperature to our server that's running. And so now let's say you have another Raspberry Pi that has a humidity sensor attached to it. So over on that Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna just copy all of the code we have in client one, and I'm gonna create a new client called client two, client2.py. And again, this would be, uh, so run this code on Raspberry Pi two. So be a completely separate Raspberry Pi where you'd be running this code. And again, you have to install the Python libraries on that Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to just copy all that code in. And I'm going to, instead of sending the temperature from this one, I'm gonna send humidity. And the humidity is gonna be, I don't know, 40. Just for illustration purposes. And then I'm gonna come over to another window here and I'm gonna say Python client2.py. It's gonna say connection established. The server is gonna say, I got a new accepted. And then now you're gonna see I'm getting both humidity and temperature sensor readings at my server. And so let's, um, let's get a little interesting here. Let's, let's add a third Raspberry. Pi. So we'll say client three dot pi. Client three, this Raspberry Pi, call this Raspberry Pi three, is also going to send temperature data. We'll, we'll make it slightly different so that you can see it, but it's also just sending raw temperature data. Okay. So let's come over here. Let's give ourselves another window and we'll say Python client3.py. You see connection established, and now we're gonna get a third um, accepted, and now it's sending temp. But now we're getting temp 80, temp 75, and we have no idea which pi is which. And so you can get into this scenario where you're like, I don't know which temperature sensor reading am I getting at this point. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kill the server, just hit control C, it's gonna shut down. Now, that thing that we just fixed by changing those client.py files is now broken here. I'm going to hit control C here. You're going to see nothing's happening. It's not disconnecting from the server. Uh, and that's because that's that event handler stuff that we just removed, this signal handler stuff. And so um, again, until they fix this, this is just an issue with Python 2. This is not an issue in Python 3. If you run this in Python 3, you will not get the same issue. You don't have to adjust these two client.py files, it, everything will run just fine. So uh, this is just a Python 2.7 bug, uh, it, it appears at this time. And so what I need to do is I need to come over to my uh, system resource manager and I'm just gonna kill those processes directly. Um, I'm doing that off screen here, you can't see this, I'm just doing end process. Um, if you're on Windows, you would use the task manager. And so now you come back over and these were all terminated. You'll see they say terminated and we're ready to run them again. Okay, so how do we distinguish between our clients? Well, back here on the server, you can see in the my message that we have two arguments that are passed to it, this session ID and the data. And so if we want, we can just change this to be um, received, did I spell that right? Is it EI? Received data from node this, and then we'll pass what the data was. And then we'll just do a dot format on that. And we'll pass it the SID 
and the data. Okay, so now when we fire this message, uh, we're gonna print out something different. And again, you can name these messages whatever you want. It doesn't have to be my underscore message. Just whatever you call it here is what you need to refer to it as when you're emitting it in the clients. And so with that simple server change, we're gonna go ahead and fire the server back up. You'll see that it started here. And then let's go and fire our clients back up. We're gonna start up client three. And we'll come back here and we'll start up client two and client one. Okay, and again, obviously this is a very simple example. You'd wanna put more error handling in on your server to handle disconnections and things like that. And the, the socket IO library takes care of a lot of reconnect stuff and handling that for you under the covers. But now you can see the data is coming in. We're saying receive data from node. And so the temps right here are different but so are the node IDs. And so that's a way, again, that you can distinguish between them if you're storing that information, you know, in a local database or something. Uh, another way to do this is from the clients, you could pass some sort of identifier. So you could send the temp and then you can say, you know, node ID or something and uh, keep track of your, your Raspberry Pi clients that way. But anyway, that's just a very quick, uh, walk through of how you can use socket IO out of the box. This is very little code, as you can see. Um, you know, the, the clients are 20 lines a piece, the server's 20 lines, and now um, I'm sending data from multiple Raspberry Pi nodes to a single server that can then, again, aggregate that data, send it up to the cloud, do whatever you want with it. Um, and again, just as a reminder, the server is listening on a specific port. In this case, it's 5,000. You can change that to be a different port. You need to make sure that that port is accessible from outside of your Raspberry Pi. And then in your client code, you need to make sure that you're passing not local host, but the host name or the IP address of the server, as well as whatever port that you choose. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode. If you have any questions about this, feel free to stick them in the comments below. I'd be happy to try and answer those for you. Otherwise, I hope this helps you get going on your project.